Okay, I, I just want to let you know that it's been bugging me for a long time now. That cheap laptops somehow are synonymous with a less than complex and an overall bad experience. I'll, I'll concede, and many others, that any cheap computer has to have some sort of Achilles heel. But if a band-aid or old-fashioned will for ignorance actually works for the end user to get over it, why not get used to that one thing and go about actually liking what you're going to use basically every single day, right? I'm, I'm saying something, something more like this. At 200 bucks, brand new, has real windows, and doesn't entirely suck. So here it is. The Cheap Laptop Buyer's Guide, defining something that you can actually use every single day. And I'll break it down to five easy to follow steps that should lead you to a full-fledged Windows laptop. Now to start, just like to say, can you get a desktop or upgrade what you already have? I'm serious, for not much money, you can go secondhand right now and get a better experience if you can just stay, you know, stationary, butt down in your desk. If it has to be mobile, or you just want something that has all your peripherals built in, then I say spending less is kind of getting more. If you get what's good enough for what you're looking for, it, it, then you can already save a buttload on all the other stuff that you'll probably never need. So let me break it down nice and easy. Number one, don't get a Chromebook. Don't get a Chromebook. Number two, uh, don't go with EMMC flash storage. It's listed as 32 or 64 gig usually, and they may be advertised as solid state, but it's not what you're thinking of when you hear those two words anywhere else in the tech world. And I promise that they'll be the excuse to never use that cheap piece of crap that will forever be hiding in the corner just under your bed. Just, just find something with an SSD. Even a hard drive would be a-okay. You can always swap it for an SSD after your warranty is out and use the hard drive for an external for like backups or just general storage, maybe games, you know, whatever. At number three, get a processor that is at least recent, i.e. dual core, four threads. If you want gaming, get a secondhand desktop for the same price or, or, okay, or go with the recent AMD APU. Budget mobile graphics have made serious strides recently. Those recent APUs will work as expected for your major esports and free to play titles. I.e. They'll, they'll open the game and play them good enough at the lowest settings, which mind you is better than, well, not at all. And number five, USB and HDMI are amazing. Don't get hung up on the 0.3 megapixel webcam, poor mic, plastic jazzy, slow Wi-Fi, crap screen, a mushy keyboard, dead zone trackpad. I mean, these are just the common things that can catch your negative eye, right? So just don't get hung up on them, okay? I know it's easy to point out the Achilles heel of, well, anything, but if you stick to these guidelines, you're gonna end up a happy little duckling with a good enough laptop that you can actually use every single day. Oh, and just by the way, yeah, what's sitting right here, that's what this is, as basically all the Achilles heels that I mentioned earlier wrapped up in a nice, neat little box. But the things that can't physically be changed, i.e. storage or the processor, those are fine. Even having four gigs of RAM is fine. It's full-fledged Windows, dual core, four threads, and has an M.2 SSD, all for 200 bucks which is especially great when the airlines or another passenger crams their stuff on top of your backpack that has, by the way, a padded laptop compartment. They still cram their stuff into the overhead, ended up doing this. It doesn't feel as bad right now, knowing that I didn't spend so much to begin with, it can probably fix one of its Achilles heels, the screen. And that, well, I can still do this. Yeah, hey, uh, voice of Bay here. Gotta say, everybody knows that a keyboard and mouse and monitor gives you a desktop experience. Big deal. It's probably what you're here for anyway, but I'm, I'm just using the monitor because it and the laptop screen resolutions are both 1080 and, well, the monitor isn't busted, okay? Now here, as you can probably see, is what you're interested in and probably a more likely use case if you're going to be using it every day just to kind of chill. Something that's interesting, Dota 2. Free to play, still top 5 Twitch, don't get me wrong. I don't know why. Aside from that little graphical error on the demo map, I'm doing 1080, almost 100% resolution scaling, 75 frames. Now we're on to Overwatch. I know it's a little long in the tooth gameplay. I still enjoy it most of all, but this is 720 right here, not 1080. And you can see 30 average, and we're dipping down to two for the 1% lows. That's just, a, that's just rough. Everything's on low, 50% scaling. But here's a little trick that I'm gonna show you. You can't go down to 33%, unfortunately. You can go to 21 by nine on Overwatch and force it to basically render less pixels, right? It's kind of weird because you're like a cinematic or an ultra-wide-esque look, but it's a lot less strain 
what's going on you can see right away as soon as i reset it i'm at 58 23 for the lows now i can guarantee once we get into a team fight or something like that it's gonna drop again because there's really nothing no action that's going on right here but as somebody who games on a 240 hertz monitor normally which <laughs> gotta be honest i'm struggling to keep up with these days because i just can't get the right stuff to keep well up with it I, I can say that it, it really doesn't feel bad. Most of the time, it's gonna stick between 40 and 50 FPS, and that's kind of the comfort range if you can't quite get to a solid 60. It doesn't feel chuggy except for once or twice. I think you just saw right there where we just chugged and stuttered just a little bit. Yes, that's annoying. No, it's not gonna get in the way nearly as much as you think, and I think you probably have experienced it once or twice for any uh, related reasons, and I gotta say, this actually works better than I expected. This 3150U that's in here, boy, that thing can it can actually work on these basic esports titles. Uh, so overall, not so bad, right?